right, guys, here it is. Next project. This is a 2008 Yamaha Raptor 350. And as you can tell by the thumbnail, <clears throat> I bought this in a warehouse. Um, it was a large construction company and it belonged to one of the workers there. And I, the story that I got was it had cob issues and he took it apart to clean the cob and somebody threw the cob away on him and he just gave up on it and let it go for short money. Um, I'm not buying that story <laughs> and we'll get into why. So it did come with the seat, as you guys can see here. Let's just pop that off, set that aside. And this is pretty much what we're looking at here. Um, it also came with the airbox. The airbox lid. I don't know what that is, but I don't think it goes to this bike. Uh, it's a seat latch. That looks like an exhaust. And it looks like a solenoid. Solenoid tells me that Mr. I got a car problem is lying because this probably has electrical issues. And it did come, it did come with the two side plastics, which is good. And it came with the, uh, with the hood also. Came with the hood also. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm not really sure what to make of this thing. You know, and I, when I look up front here and I see stuff like this is missing a screw, that's missing a screw. Uh, the, you know, the keys out. I mean, why would you take the, the front fenders off to get the cob out? That, that's a red flag right there. I mean, I noticed all this stuff when I bought it, um, but it was such a good deal, I couldn't pass it up. You know, we got a bust, busted lever here, busted lever there. Um, the grips don't look too bad though. They're aftermarket. Oh, uh, ODI, I think that's what it says. If you guys remember, um, the, the, the Raptor 250 I sold had this same color scheme. It had the candy apple frame and the gray plastics and it was a really sharp looking ATV. Um, kind of a shame I sold it because I would have had twins. I would have had the big brother and the little brother. Can't keep them all. Um, oh boy. I put this plug in here, if you guys can see that. When I put this plug in here, when I pressure, when I didn't pressure wash it, but when I washed it, um, I was able to wash it outside um, before I brought it in the garage anyway. And the can this, this thing here, that looks brand new. Doesn't look factory. Um, I looked down here. You know, this is disconnected. I'm assuming that's back to tail lights. When I see the CDI like this, the CDI is not plugged in. That gives me pause. Uh, oh God, why is it all busted off here? I don't know. Things just uh, things just look like I don't know where that wire is going to. Where's that wire going to? Let me go around the other side here and see where that, that wire is going to. It goes, huh? That's weird. It comes back around. And I'm not really sure where that goes. I can see it. I get on the back side here. Yeah. Oh, it goes down to the starter, I think. The start is in the front though, that's weird. Maybe that's the ground. That might be body ground. Oh yeah, here it is right here. Yep, it's ground. It's going right here. You guys can see that right there. Um, nah, the clutch cable is hooked up. Let's see what the clutch feels like. <laughs> oh boy, that feels terrible. Uh, yeah, it's a project, guys. It's definitely a project. Um, the chain is really rusty. Maybe I can lube it up and it'll be all right. We'll have to look at the sprockets to see if they're leaning. Let's see. Yep, uh, sprockets are taking a left turn, so <laughs> those gotta be replaced. 
So it needs a chain of sprockets. Um, we got mismatch hardware here and here. Um, not quite understand why we have mismatch hardware here. Somebody take that off. Try to adjust the timing. Don't know, but we're gonna do that as well. There's a rubber glove. Somebody put a rubber glove over the uh, manifold. Intake manifold. The glove is full of water. Let's get rid of that. That's not good. And uh, I think that's pretty much where we're at. So I, I guess the first thing we'll try to do is I'll plug this, I'm going to plug the CDI back in. Well, we'll try to see if this thing has spark. But in the meantime, I want to show you guys a video of uh, what this thing looked like when I picked it up. And I washed it. So enjoy. Alright guys. I am going to wash this thing up right now. It's pretty filthy. I'm not going to get to it do any work on it. But I want to try to at least clean it up. So it is not the disaster that it is right now. I mean, it's loaded with dirt, grease, grime. So I'm gonna spray it off real quick. All right, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, washing of this. It was pretty filthy when I first got it, but um, it's, it's okay now. Um, you can still see there's still some, some heavy, heavy mud on it. So I'm going to say this was being ridden when it died. Um, so it either died for spark or compression. I'm not buying the carburetor deal. So we need to dig into it, which we will. And we're going to make this a nice ATV. And this is going to be a multi-series build. So I hope you guys enjoy it and you stick around for all the videos. Um, I guess at this point here, oh, um, when I bought this, um, I asked him if I could video and he said yes. And my GoPro, for some reason, was on burst and it was just taking like pictures instead of uh, video. So I couldn't use any of it. And it's kind of disappointing because of the way, the way they brought this thing out of the warehouse on a pallet with a fork truck. And they loaded it in the back of my truck with the fork truck and it was it would have made for cool video But unfortunately, I lost the video and I wasn't able to um, show you guys um, My fault. I'll do better next time <laughs> All right, let's get to it. I guess we'll start with uh, we'll move the Let's see what this gas smells like. Doesn't smell. Well, it's starting to smell a little bonishy, so it's probably been in here for a little while. Right? As you guys can see here, the only problem I have with the plastics is this one right here, this brake. Um, I'll figure out a way to, to fix that. All right, first thing is I want to crank this motor over by hand to make sure that we uh, it ain't locked up before I try spinning with the starter. I had to 
hammer that one on with it. <sighs> Had to hammer it on to get it off. Uh, she don't want to come out. Let's put this back in there. I'm going to replace these with cap screws. Just so I know that they're not stripped out. And hopefully this one here. We able to get this one too. And hitting it like that, put shock through it to loosen the threads if they're tight. There we go. All right, now. Let's grab a wrench and see if this thing turns. I can hear it. I think I want to spray a little WD down inside there. Probably smoke quite a bit when she starts, but that's okay. Let's go lube it up a little bit. There we go. Gonna use jumper wires for now. All right, let's check the key. See if the lights work. We don't have any lights. Should have a pretty good ground on this motor, but I'm gonna grab it right off the actual ground itself. Let's see if we got power. Yep. See that guys? Power. Alright, let's see if we got power coming out of any of this stuff. Now they should be some type of safety, and it's usually a clutch safety. Let me um, put a clamp on that. Let's check it now. Nothing. 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 So, one of two things. It's probably ground, so let's do that. Let's put this on here. Check the ground. Get power. See if we get anything now. Nothing. Alright, we got something going on with that CDI. Nothing. Let's see if we get anything for crank. So we get nothing. Let me see if these go into the saw and I actually do anything. I hit that button. Some one of these has to do something. That's the saw. That goes to the CDI. Nothing there. Usually this one. I'm gonna try this one. All right, so that's the starter button right there. If you guys can see that, I move my arm out of the way. That's the starter button. The blue is the starter button. All right, we're gonna go straight to the starter at this point because I don't know if the wiring's any good, and I want to see if the starter's good. So let's um. So what I'm gonna do is. Let me get you a better position here. I'm going to tap off on the battery and see if she cranks. All right, that did not sound very good. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pull the plug and I'm going to try it again and crank it over. You guys see that plug? What do you think of that? That looks <laughs> like it has been burning oil for a while. Yeah, this motor needs a top end for sure. All right, let's see if we can get the electrical going first. I don't know. If, I highly doubt this thing's got any spark at all. I very seriously doubt it. All right, let's see if it cranks over any easier now. And I don't, let's get it on the run up here. And I don't see any spark. We got wires unhooked up here, so I'm not really sure. These go to this. I don't know if they feed power to anything. I'm going to have to look in the uh, manual. Uh, let me pull the manual and I'll come back. 
All right, guys, I got my laptop out and I pulled a schematic. And if you guys can see right here, that's the plug that the wires are out of in the back. This is the relay itself. So you have the wire coming here from the battery going into the relay. And then it, on the other side, when the relay gets tripped, it sends the power to the starter. Number seven is the starter. Now, this is a blue wire with a white stripe and a blue wire with a black stripe. L is always blue on these uh, Yamahas. And B is black and W is white. So we got a blue and white wire, a blue and black wire. The blue and white wire goes to the CDI, which is right here. That's the CDI. And then uh, blue, the blue and black wire goes uh, up to the handlebars for the, um, whatever. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Anyways, the one I care about mostly is the CDI one. I want to power the CDI. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over there, and this is the way it's supposed to look. It's supposed to be red, red, blue with white, blue with black. Let's go do it. All right, guys, we got to wire it up right. The two reds are in the front, and the blue with white is on this side, and the blue with black is on that side, and that's the way it's supposed to be wired. So let's set the battery up over here and see if anything changes. All right, we got everything hooked up, but unfortunately, our start is still not working. And this start button doesn't seem to be, be working too good. So that's gonna need a fix. Um, let's try jumping it. All right, let me see if I can see spark over here on this spark plug. All right, let me jump it and see if we have spark. We got good spark. I think, I think the next thing we should do is see if we can get this thing to pop off. What do you guys say? All right, guys, let's hit it with a little bit of uh Start the fluid, see what happens. <laughs> She's got spark, so it should fire up, should fire off. Let's see. Make sure the key is on. Key is on. Let's give it power. And uh, let's jump that solenoid and see if she fires off. There's something wrong with the starter button. So we're gonna have to fix that. All right, let's see. Here we go. All right. I don't think she wants to go. Should we try a compression test? Let's do that. All right, guys. Let's see. Uh, let's see what we get for compression, shall we? Stops, does it? <laughs> yeah, 60 psi. That ain't gonna start. We need to have at least 100, 120. All right, we got problems for sure. All right, I think what I want to do now before I start tearing into this, um, I just want to see if it'll fire over. So I'm gonna pull the tank and just for the heck of it. I want to check the um, the gap on the camshaft here to see if uh, the valve latch is right. So I'm going to pull the tank and then we're going to do that. All right, guys. So I looked it up and the intake valve should be three to four thousandths. The exhaust should be seven to eight thousandths. And that's what we're going to go do now. All right, guys. Let's try it again. I adjusted the valves. They weren't really out that bad. So this top end, I'm pretty sure is smoked. All right, let's give it a shot again. Came up a little, came up 10 PSI, so the valves were a little low, but that top end is smoked. I don't think it's enough to stop. Um, 
I could try putting a little fuel, I guess, down the cylinder. See if it'll pop off, but I don't think it's going to pop off. Um, this thing's got to really, it's going to have to crank over super fast in order to get this to, to, to um, fire off on low compression. But um, I don't know, let's give it a try and see what happens. All right, guys, let's shoot a little bit of fuel down in there. The rings might be stuck. I highly doubt it by the way that plug looked. <laughs> By the way that plug left, I'm going to say the top end is a junk, but let's uh, see if we can get the pop over. Nope. We are too low on compression for this thing to start. So it looks like uh, we got a rebuild on our hands. All right, guys, see that in there? That is metal. And it looks like aluminum, maybe. So this motor is going to be in rough shape when we pull it apart. And you can see all the sparkles inside the oil. There's the filter. Pull it over to the bench, and we'll take a look at it. But you can see all the sparkles inside of that. All right, let's go to the bench. All right, guys, let's get a close look at this. So this is the filter that's in the plug. And look at the stuff inside of that. Let's see if I can pull some of it out. It looks like gasket maker, maybe. I don't even know. I'm going to assume it's gasket maker, and it's stuck inside the screen. So that's going to have to get cleaned out. Let me grab a piece of it. I want to see what that is. Yeah, gasket maker. So we'll have to clean that out. Now here's the plug itself, and there's like large pieces of gasket maker here. You can see it right there. There's one big piece of it right there. You can see. I mean, I, I, I've said it multiple times in videos. You know, guys, go easy with the gasket maker. You don't need to put a ton on there. It's just to fill the voids. There's a huge piece right there. All right, so we're gonna clean all this up and then throw it back on. All right, guys, I cleaned them all up. Nice and clean. Oh, the O-ring fell off. Put that back on. We should be good to go there. And clean the screen out. There's still a little bit in there, but not much. It's just this gasket maker is all that's in there. So that's clean. And I clean this all out, top and bottom. So let's make sure I did. And that's clean, both sides. So those are all set. I'm just gonna let the, the engine keep dripping, drip all that crap out of there. Uh, I drained the pan out. I just wanted to show you guys all the gasket maker in there. At least I think that's all gasket maker. Yeah, it's all gasket maker. Come on, guys. <laughs> Little is more. Uh, never seems to amaze me. I took the back plastic off. Um, it wasn't even bolted down. I know it was just sitting there. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a screwdriver. And as you guys can see here, I'm going to start just getting the heavy the heavy dirt off. I have a piece of cardboard underneath here to try to catch most of it. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if I'm successful. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna do that off camera. I'm gonna try to clean this all up as, as good as I can. And then we'll come back and we'll start taking this motor apart. All right, guys, I took the head pipe off. Uh, it wasn't that bad. Uh, I wasn't rusted on there and then it came right off. I did clean this up, WD-40. Toothbrush, there's a WD. Came out pretty good, got all the heavy stuff. Did the other side as well. I'll show you guys. That came out really nice. That's nice and clean now. Uh, at this point here, I think uh, we need to take the head off. So I am going to remove uh, the top mounts. And I don't know if you guys can see it on camera here, but this weld right there, and there's weld across here. 
So those broke at one point, somebody fixed them. Hopefully we don't have any other more, any other bad frame points on this thing. I did notice that we're missing, we're missing the mounts for the front of the um, fenders. There's supposed to be some kind of angle brackets on here that you bolt to for the end of the, the end of the uh, front fenders here where the uh, hood goes. So I need to figure out something here. Weld something on there and fix that. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on around here in general, but we do have Spock, so I'm not gonna mess with anything electrical, even though the harness is a bit of a disaster. I'm not gonna mess with it. I don't think that might, I don't think the solenoid's right. Um, we're definitely gonna have to address the button. This button doesn't feel right. It's not popping back out. I might have to get a new, uh, new hand control for that. Um, the list of parts for this bike is growing by the minute, uh, the more I get into it. So uh, I say, uh, let's close the rest of this video out um, with addressing what this bike needs. So as I've been walking around and just looking at it and cleaning it, um, again, we need some welding up front here. I also noticed that this tab right here is broken off and this tab goes on the fender mount. I took the fender mount off, but this welds on the fender mount, so I gotta weld this back on. Um, what else do I gotta do? The clutch cable right here, looks like it burnt through on the pipe. It doesn't feel very good. Um, I might use it initially just to see how it is, but that probably needs replacing. Um, I straightened this out. This was bent down and over, so I just used a, um, an adjustable wrench. I put it on here and I just pulled it up and I got it perfectly straight now. Um, so that's all set. The foot peg itself is pretty, pretty bent. Um, you guys can see it's pretty bent back. Nothing I can do about it. I'm not going to replace it. Um, what else do we got over here? So on this side, brake pedal, same deal. It was, it was down and in. So I bent that back and now that is in the right position now. So that's good. Uh, the heel guard was bent back into the tire. I pulled it forward. This foot peg is good. Um, I got to get a new plug for it. I need a filter, oil filter. Um, there's no carburetor with it. So I got to figure out a carburetor. I do have a carburetor here for a uh, 350 um, Grizzly. And I also have another carburetor for a, um, I, I want to say Suzuki. It's either, ah, it's either Suzuki or Kawasaki. I think that's a 350 also. Um, I might try to use one of those two or I'll try to source the OEM cob for this. Again, we don't have the cob. Um, I got play in the A-arms here. These bushings here are worn out. The same thing happened on the 250 Raptor that I had. I had to replace them. You can feel they're, just, they're loose. Um, the steering stem is pretty tight. Um, what else? Obviously, we need a top end. I don't know about the bottom end until we pull it apart, but we're definitely going to need a piston and rings, a wrist pin, a uh, full engine gasket set, and uh, what else? Oh, we need a chain and sprockets. And I was looking back here at the pads. And let me turn this light on, actually. Luckily, I have a light here. You can see <laughs> that it is metal on metal right now. Um, so I think the disc itself might be okay, but we're definitely gonna need pads. Maybe even the rear caliper, I don't know. I wouldn't know until I tear into it. Maybe it's salvageable, who knows. Um, let's see, I don't think I see anything else that this thing needs off the top of my head. So that's the list right now. Um, I mean, the tires aren't great. I'm not going to put tires on it. Um, the next owner can put tires on it if he wants. The front, the front are kind of down. Um, the back have some tread on them. They're probably hard. Yeah, they're hard. So, but they're usable. I'll clean the wheels up. Um, we're missing, we're missing some lug nuts. So I'll get some lug nuts for it. Just so uh, all the wheels have lug nuts. I don't think any other ones are missing them. Maybe. 
Nope, just that one back wheel is missing it. And I might have one somewhere in my stash, so I might not have to buy that. Um, the rear brake is missing the spring that goes, that turns the tail light on when you hit the brake. Um, I don't know if it works, we'll figure all that out, but that needs to be fixed. Um, we were missing a bolt on the reverse. Uh, and the headlights don't work, and I gotta figure out the headlights. Uh, but other than that, I think we're in pretty good shape. So at this point here, I think I'm gonna end this video, and next video will be engine teardown. And um, I'm gonna finish cleaning this up. I'm gonna clean the frame, all the frame dirty. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe everything down, clean it all up. I'm gonna do that off camera when I come back to the, uh, when I come back for video two. Everything will be nice and clean. It'll be looking good, and uh, we'll be ready to do engine teardown. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm, I'm excited about this build. I uh, can't wait to get into it. You know that guy over there. <laughs> I don't know. It just didn't do it for me. Um, this one here is kind of cool. I can't wait to get this one going. It's, it's, Raptors are nice. I like Yamahas. Yamahas are cool bikes. Um, they run well. Uh, my favorite though, if I have to honestly say it, is Honda. Um, the TRX 450. Um, it's, it's just, that thing's a beast. I, I had one and shouldn't have sold it. I kept my KFX and I sh should, have sold, should have sold that and kept the TRX. But whatever. It is what it is. I do like that though. That's a nice bike. Um, Alright, so I'm going to, enough blabbing. I've talked enough. Um, I'm going to end it here. And um, I want to thank everybody for watching and um, stay tuned for the next video. Uh, we got a lot to do on this thing and it's going to be fun. And can't wait. Thanks.